We are recording. Okay, it is 434 on June 17th. We are having a selectman's meeting by video conference. We have, Ben, are you here? Yeah, there's a lot of noise in the background. I don't know where it's coming from. Is Jeff, Jeff, is, Jeff is with us. Yes. Catherine, Tim. Yes. Myself. Also with us is uh, John O'Connell, the town manager, Kathy Ornato, admin secretary. We have Ted Snowden, public works director, and members of the press representing the Lincoln County News and the Wiscasset newspaper. Shall we start our meeting? The first item on the agenda is the approval of the payroll warrants for June 5th and June 12th. I move that we approve the payroll warrants of June 5th and June 12th, 2020. I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor, Ben? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Kim? Yes. And myself makes five, five to zero. Okay. Accounts payable warrants for June 9th and June 16th. I move that we approve the accounts payable warrant June 9 and June 16, 2020. I'll, I'll second that. Jeff, okay. All those in favor, Ben? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Kim? Yes. And myself, 5-0. It passes. Okay, we have the approval of the minutes for June 2nd, 2020. Do we have any Corrections, uh, is there any issues with the minutes? Yes. Okay, Ben, what? Um, first page, the very bottom B, the town clerk report. Mm -hmm. The third line down where it says, those elected in September will serve until June 2021. I would like to amend that to read in September, those elected to a one-year term will serve until June 2021. Those elected two-year term will serve until June 2022. And those elected to a third-year term will serve until June 2023. Thank you. We, don't have, we don't have three-year terms. We only have two, Ben. Oh, we're talking about other committees. Yes, but this is talking about the budget committee and the water district and school board. Some of okay. them do have three-year terms and the budget committee, some of them are one-year terms. Okay. Kathy, did you get that all written down? I did. Okay. So do we have a motion to amend the um, minutes? Yes. Uh, so moved. Yeah, Judy, can we approve it as amended? I don't see why not. I mean, okay. we're, we're just adding a statement clarifying exactly what their terms are going to be so that people don't think that they're going to be elected now and they're only going to work go for two Perfect. years from September 8th, 2020. Perfect. I would like to move the minutes as, as amended. Second. Okay. Catherine. Okay. All those in favor, Ben? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Kim? Yes. And myself is yes, so that is 5-0. Okay, they passed, well, they're corrected. We have no special presentations. We have no committee appointments, no public hearings, no public comment. The next item is department head or committee chair. Town clerk Linda Perry registers hours uh, submitted by memo. John? Yeah, this, this is something, and I, I put the uh, I put the sheet that she produced. I put it in the old, an old folder. But this is something that's done every year. It's to avoid having additional hours in the evening, which you know aren't aren't necessary uh, in town here. So this is pretty standard, right, Kathy? Yep, that's correct. Okay. Yeah, I believe we do this every year. Yeah, we do. Okay. I'm can I have a motion? I move to change the hours for the registrar for all 2020 elections to be consistent 
with the normal hours of operation on the five days prior to election day and not require the additional hours between 5 and 9 p.m. Second. Kim seconded. Any, any comments or questions? Okay, all those in favor, Ben? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Tim? Yes. And myself is yes. It passes five to zero. Okay, the next is the department head monthly reports. Uh, does anybody have any comments regarding those? Um, just, just that they're always really well done, John, if you could pass that along. It, they're, they, it's easy to read. I enjoy getting the email. Yep. A, lot of, a, lot of good, a lot of good information, and you've probably seen um, some of those complimentary e emails about uh, the, Morse, the Morse graduation of the aircraft. They were, they were thrilled about that. Wonderful. And I will pass it on from you, Jeff. Yeah. I'd like to I'd like to say the same thing. I think uh, every month that we get to reports from all the department heads, I'm more and more impressed every time I read them. And I read them all, and they are all outstanding. And I think the Morse High School grads should be thrilled to death with what went into their uh, graduation ceremony. Rick's report was outstanding, and I love the picture of the town crew on the mowers. That was great. Uh, Kathy? I just wanted to, to let the board know that I, I did receive a report from wastewater treatment plant, but it was well after um, I mailed out the packet. So I'll print that report off and you can have it in your tomorrow night when you come in, you can pick it up. All right. Kim? I was just wondering if um, I don't have I don't have any comments on the um, any of the reports. I was wondering if whoever has in the background, they could press mute because I'm having a really hard time following the meeting. There is someone. There's one of the phone. One of the phone. I think is having a problem. Let me try mute mine. Yeah. If if yeah, you just mute when you're not talking. It could stop some of that. Okay. Thank you, Kim. All right now we have the next item on the agenda is a public works director, uh, Ted Snowden, downtown bent maintenance and benches. Ted, do uh, you want to unmute yourself and talk? Is that noise back? Or it might be this computer. Is the noise back in the background? No. No? Good. Fine. On the benches, they've, they've pretty much settled down, all the bickering going. I've got two benches on each side of the road underneath the new trees, and I haven't had any complaints. And I got the rest of the benches up here at the garage. And I'm planning when this COVID thing settles down a little bit, we can put them all out. And we have we have a total of what eight benches? Eight benches. Okay. Ted, Ted, thank you for your, you and the guys that it was uncalled for. So thank you very much for the work you guys do. No problem. I want to second that too. I'll third it. I'm yeah. the fourth it. <laughs> yes, Kim. It's a unanimous. Um, so we're going to have benches on both sides of the street. Is that correct? Is that how we're yeah. doing it? Uh, right now, there's supposed to be four on each side, but the lady at the bakery, she felt left out. So I put one up there and then I put two underneath the new trees we got on each side. There's four trees. That's and great. They had them real close together. So I moved them around and spread them out. And, and until this COVID thing dies down a little bit, I think it's pretty well spaced out and and it looks good. It so does. they haven't been they haven't been moving the benches again. They've left them where they, they are. Have, they have not. They've left them right where they are. Okay, let's hope so. I don't want to have to put them bolt them into Back the ground to make them stay there. And if there is one at the town office while we're waiting to put it down, it's up underneath that the purple maple tree up there. The, so that looks pretty nice. So we'll just until it calms down a little bit, then we'll put them all eight downtown. Okay. Perfect. All right, Perfect. Thank you. And thank you guys. I, I, I'm sorry you guys had to go through all that. That was uncalled for. 
Oh, there was no problem. We just lugged them around a lot. And that was it. <laughs> we thank you. Okay, we do have unfinished business. Uh, it is the Middle Street flag issue. John? Yeah. Um, the, the ordinance is, applies to a lot more people than that one flag. And if we were to enforce the letter of the ordinance, I'd have to send uh, Bruce out to pull down you know, probably 20, 20 flags. So if if the board wishes to refer it to the ORC with a view to changing the ordinance, then uh, I think we could get it on the November election um, ballot if it's if it's considered to be important enough for, for an ordinance change. And that's for me. That's the that's the simplest way out of it because we can't have one person or two people don't like a particular flag. When there's another fifteen or twenty out there that that uh, are just as illegal. That's my, that's my two cents worth. So what is the board's pleasure, pleasure? Do you want to turn around and redo the ordinance because of this yeah. issue or what, Kim? Yes, yeah, I, I, I would like, but so John, what you're saying is that this gentleman can keep his flag up until we do the, the ordinance change. Yeah, because yeah. he's he's no, let me put it this way. Nobody elsewhere is objecting to other flags that aren't in uh, conformance. So we can't we can't just pick on one. That's my that's my take. Um, I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay. Yep. Okay, Kim, you have something? Yeah, I just think that if it's um, like if we have this ordinance on the books, we have we have to follow it. I, I would like to see that changed in November, if it's possible, you know, to, to rewrite the ordinance. But um, I suspect that if we give this guy permission to violate the ordinance that's going to open up a can of worms, people will then have permission to violate whatever ordinance they feel like we can't enforce. So, I mean, personally, I think it's a stupid ordinance, but it's on the books. I don't think that we can give someone permission to violate an ordinance. Catherine, do you have anything, or Ben? Well, yes, I have a question. What do we want to change the ordinance to say? Anything goes? No, I think it would probably be the wording of it. I think right now it's almost anything that's in print that doesn't say open. It's kind of a very vague you know, inclusion. I read the ordinance once and I thought this is really something. It's, it is. Know, it is something. Way back in the day, maybe it, it was. But it, 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 also, was easy, but. it also has to do with lettering on the flag. Now, yes. changing the ordinance, and I'm going to be a devil's advocate here. God only knows what they would put uh, what they would say on a flag. I mean, are we going to be that open ended about it? I don't know. I, that's why I'm. Well, I, I don't think it should be carte blanche, but I think perhaps that uh, the ordinance review committee is certain can certainly look at it and come up with alternatives to what is already written, and then we will look at it and decide whether that is a, you know, is appropriate or not. But, uh, it, theoretically, this flag that uh, that all this hoorah is about is a political flag. And one person complained about it. And if you, you know, the Constitution gives us certain rights. So I think we have to keep a lot of things in mind. And I think perhaps letting that flag stay pending the change in the vote in November is something we really should perhaps think about. I know Kim doesn't agree, but uh, I'm just thinking of, you know, all all different aspects of it all right kim um i think that if we have an ordinance that says you can't have a flag with letters on it that don't say open then we can't give this guy permission 
Because if we do, then we give everyone permission to put up flags that say all kinds of stuff. And that's what's going to happen. I predict you'll have like the people downtown who are really angry are going to, you know, put up retaliatory flags and it could be really, um, we, can't, we won't be able to tell anyone, well, you know, your flag's not okay. Uh, because, do you know what I mean? I just feel like if we have an ordinance, whether we agree with it or not, we have to, we have to follow the ordinance. Yeah. So if, if I understand you correctly, Kim, you're basically saying if, if this man is out of, out of sync with the ordinance and other people are out of sync with the ordinance, we should cite them just as we cite him. I think so. Okay. Then maybe well, refer it, the board could refer it to the ORC to see if it makes sense to change it. Is there a better way of phrasing it to achieve whatever it is we want? What is that? Does that sound for the rest of the board? What is your thoughts on um, uh, the fact well, that he cannot fly it now? Madam Chair, my yeah. thinking is somewhat like yours. If we're going to change it, what in the world would we change it to? That's 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 what I have a problem with. I, I I think if we do send it to the ORC, I hope that they will look at it um, realistically because you never know what people are going to put on a sign on a flag. I mean, that, I just I don't know. I I'm, I'm torn on this one. I I really am. I don't feel he should be, I agree with Kim that he should not be permitted to fly it right now because that is breaking the ordinance. Um, I think it might behoove us to send it to the ORC and see what they come back because the board has the final discretion as to whether they send it to, they approve it or not and see what they come up with. Uh, I don't know. Just my thoughts, guys. Catherine. Uh, I have a question for John. Did we, when this first came up way back, did you happen to ask uh, Maine Municipal for any legal uh, opinion or whatever on it? No, I didn't. I, I no, can't I didn't. remember. I, I don't remember either. I'm pretty sure I didn't. Um, Bruce, okay. Bruce cited him. Yeah, um, I remember that. Uh, yeah. And I'm just thinking of the constitutional. Yeah. Okay. Check with. I'll Reason. check with them. Yeah. Um, it, it's. It, I'm look. I'm reading over the minutes from last time. Excuse me, Kim. I'll get back to you on that. But okay. it just. I just saw that political signs are governed by the state. So does that mean that we as a town do not have any rule over that, or does our ordinance oversee the state? Thanks, sir. Um, my, my understanding is that the political signs generally are focused on a given election and they're, they're allowed to be put out a certain length of time ahead and they're supposed to be removed within a few days. Now, so having a political sign out there all the time, I don't think would be approved by the state. But item number two, item number two is somebody can put anything inside their windows and it can say anything in the world and nobody has any say over the matter. So it's kind of, it's kind of interesting they could do exactly the same aggravating behavior as long as it's on the placard in their window then that's okay Kim you had you wanted to make a point yeah I was just gonna say that um, in the state of Maine I don't know what this law is called but we um, in our state like local govern local governments can make up any ordinances that that they want to um, that's how you know, one of those little islands was able to close its borders to town owners when COVID started and it was not unconstitutional. Um, but this sign is not a political sign, it's a flag. And so if you read the political sign ordinance, it gives clear definition of what a political sign is. And a political sign is not a flag or a banner. So the only law that this flag falls under is our own town's flag ordinance which is pretty clear that you can't have a flag that has letters on it unless it's a state or federal flag or the letters are O-P-E-M. Okay. 
Judy, I, 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 I'd like to grant, I don't know the right wording to say, but I'd like to grant this man permission to fly his flag. But uh, our fallback on is that, yes, the Board of Selectmen know that this is in violation of the ordinance and it's going to the ordinance review for change. Okay, so you're, but I'm, so what I'm, so I, so I guess what I'm getting at is that if somebody were to put a sign up that, that was really uh, flammatory, like um, I, I can't think of the right words. We oh, as a board, I can, I, then I can, can think of one that was out there that was very okay. inflammatory. You, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> yeah. right? But then, but then we as a board then give ourselves permission to not let that flag fly. Do, do you see what I'm getting at? Is no. that it's it's still we are still the board of selectmen. We we are the the law for the town of Wiscasset. So what we say, what we set is, you know, so I, I think as long as it's in ordinance review, this man should be able to fly his flag. I agree. Okay. Ben, what do you feel? How do you feel about it? Yeah. No, I don't agree with that. I mean, there's nothing in the ordinance that I'm aware of that allows us to grant exceptions. Um, I don't know. You can't win with this one. No, you um, can't. Um, the more I think about it, the more I think the people who put the original ordinance together did this town a really big favor, and it has worked really well for 30 or 40 years now. Um, the thing is, once you open the door to let one person put up a, a banner, then everybody can put up whatever they want. You can't say, oh, this is okay and this one isn't. Uh, it's not easy. I'm willing to let the ordinance review take a stab at it, but the one thing, all ordinance changes take place in the annual town meeting, not in November. Well, not in November. And okay. I think we should adhere to that. Okay. So the issue is, at this point in time, the way I see it, is number one, do we send it to the ORC? Number yes. two, allowing him to fly the flag now. And I say yes. I agree. I disagree. I don't think that we have the right to um, grant exceptions to ordinances uh, because we're the board of selectmen. Well, I seem to, I agree with Kim and Ben. Um, I don't feel it. We have that authority to um, go against the ordinances. Um, I just don't think it's the right thing to do. I would like to see it go to the ORC, let, like Ben said, let them take a stab at it. But the flag has got to come down until we have some kind of vote from the people to change the ordinance. So I, Judy, why? Well, I guess at this point, why don't you? It it sounds like it's three to two, and you guys make a motion, and then um, Catherine and I will vote. You, you know, you know, I'm not trying to push it, but I'm just no, saying that I will make yeah. that a motion that it goes to the ORC uh, for review, uh, bringing their comments back to the board. But at from this time forward, June 17th. The flag has got to come down because he he is in violation of the town ordinances. Second. Mm -hmm. it, it, the flag is, I was by there yesterday and I couldn't find it. It isn't flying, flying at the moment, is it? I think he took it down. Catherine. I mean, well, I want the, uh, I'm for the part of the motion that, uh, sends this to the ORC for their review and comments, et cetera. But then the, but to include that he has to take the flag down, I think it should be two separate issues. Or okay. two separate motions. I have, I, I have no problem with that. I have no problem doing that. I'm gonna rescind that uh, motion. I will make a motion to send this to the ORC for their review. I will second it. Okay. All those in favor of this going to the ORC, Ben? Mm, yes. Jeff? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Kim? Yes. 
and myself is yes. So that's five to zero to send the ordinance to the ORC for their review. I will make another motion um, that states that the flag at 21 Middle Street has got to come down because it is flying illegally and it is against the ordinance at this time. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Ben? I want to think about this one for a minute or two. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we're, we're telling him he's got to bring his flag down. Um, but getting into the nuts and bolts of this thing is I understand that he was turned down by the, the sign control officer. And the next step, if he wants to, is to go to Superior Court. I believe that's in the ordinance. And it's the decision of the board whether or not we want to authorize us, you know, going to court and all of that, which I do not want to do. No. I don't want to give him permission to fly the flag. But at the same time, I don't want to go out of my way and tell him to take it down. Because if we were to do that, I can think of at least two other right off the bat that should come down. And I don't want to do that either. Do we have we don't have to even address that, do we? I guess that's my question. Yes. No, that's part of the ordinance. We they, every flag, uh, the code enforcement or whoever the person is who enforces it needs to then go out and take down the flags. Haven't we already done that though? Like Bruce has told the guy to take the flag down. Yeah, he hasn't told the other people in town. Yes. Yeah. So well, we could put together. A nobody letter. complained about them. I feel like if like no one should have a flag that has letters on it that aren't O P E N, um, unless we change the ordinance, because otherwise we're going to have defund the police flags and Black Lives Matters flags and all kinds of flags that people are going to find offensive and and Bruce is going to be running all over town on the flag issue. I um, we have an ordinance in place. I think that that's that's all there is to say. We have an ordinance. Bruce has told this guy to bring his flag down. Everybody else in town who's got an illegal flag should take it down. Or else why have laws? But we're here to change the laws, Kevin. Well, the Ordinance Review Committee would do that, and that's not our job, Jeff. It, but we can grant permission until the review is done. How can we do that, Jeff? Because mm -hmm. because we're the Board of Selectmen. But, well, yes, yeah, but we're not Ayatollahs. But it, we, it, 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 we, we can grant this permission because we see a discrepancy within the ordinance. The ordinance is flawed. But Jeff, the only one that can change an ordinance is by the vote of the people, not us. That that's that, that to me, that's the issue. It has to go to the people. I that, that, like I said, Judy, I, I am I am I, I am all for um going forward with your with your motion, Kim second, and us voting on it. And if Ben doesn't want to vote on it, pass him by and then go back to I mean, I don't know I, I, I don't know what to say. I no, no, no. I was questioning what we were attempting to do. We're attempting to allow this man to fly his flag, Ben. And I'm, I'm not. And my motion what, is to stop him from flying it. Correct. Us saying that it, it's it's it, it's okay. Ben, I don't see how we can say it's okay to break the our own law. Ben, we need a decision. Well, we okay. We don't have to make it tonight. Well, there's a motion on the floor right now. And the motion is to that the the uphold our ordinance. He, that our ordinance is to be upheld, and he, if he flies the flag, it'll be done illegally. Is that correct, Kathy? What I said, basically. You asking me or Kathy? 
<laughs> Kathy Arenado, I'm asking her. I'm looking yes. at her. <laughs> yeah, the, mo the motion was that the flag at 22 Middle Street come down Middle because Street. it's not in compliance with our local oh. ordinances. Which is 21 true. Middle. It's 21 Middle Street. 21 Middle. 21 Middle. Yep. Yes. Which is true. It's not he if he flies it, he's not in compliance with the ordinance. That is true, but at this point, if we only go after him, I would say that the sign control officer is discriminating because there are clearly other people in violation who are not being cited. We are not employ uh, using the law fairly. Well, he's, that's the only that's, he's the one that's bringing it to our attention at this point. Kim. I was wondering if I could offer uh, an amendment to the motion, which would be, um, the, I don't know how it would go, just to take his address out, the town of Wiscasset, um, you know, that we will enforce the ordinances on the books and no one has permission to violate the flag ordinance or something to that effect. And I agree with Ben, I don't want to single this one guy out. There are, um, and you guys don't want to either, because I'm telling you, if people start flying a lot of flags, uh, this country's divided right now. There's all kinds of flags that could go up as a protest if we allow this one flag to stay in violation of our ordinance. I just think this isn't a road we want to go down. So if somehow to make it inclusive, you know, all of the flags in violation should come down. Which would mean that uh, someone would have to complain about every single one of those flags, and then the code enforcement officer would have to go out and give every single one of those people a citation. Only one person complained about this flag and went to the code enforcement officer with the complaint. That's what drove He had to go to 21 Middle Street and give the uh, the owner, the flag owner of citation or whatever the word is. So well, I'm just thinking of the constitutional effect of all of this. So. Wouldn't it be yeah. easier until we, re we hear back from the uh, ordinance review that the code enforcement officer would uh, adhere to the ordinance that is on the books? Yeah. Plain and simple. We're not mentioning anybody, no address or anything. Whoever puts a flag up, then he has to he has to take into consideration the ordinance. How about that? Does that sound better? Yes. Say it again. Now you're going to ask me to say it again. <laughs> are we making a new motion? Or are you going to take? Are we getting rid of all those off the table? We're going to start with a new one. Let's just okay. make a motion that the code enforcement officer. Um, uh, adheres to the ordinances and um, I'm trying to figure out how to word it. Um, enforces enforces our local flag ordinance or something. And, and, and enforces our local flag ordinance. That's, and that that's way he's not picking anybody. He's not picking any address. How does that do sound to, then? Do you want to include in that that if he receives a complaint about a specific flag or do you yeah. want him that sounds like he's going to go all over town and mm -hmm. look for all these violations no i think if it's a complaint i mean then you know then you deal with the complaint it's just right. that he has the authority to buy, go by the ordinance he does anyway yeah, he already <laughs> i know he already has that authority i know but some of us are asking to give permission to to not follow the ordinance. And I, I think we need to vote. I, I feel strongly that we need to follow the ordinance. And um, yeah, that's all I have to say. Otherwise, why have an ordinance or any ordinance? You know, yes, we could John. start. Picking. Yes, John. Yeah, my, my suggestion would be after I've listened to you all talk, that we, we uh, publish a notice saying what the flag ordinance is in the paper and just say anybody who doesn't conform to this will be in violation and there's and there, there will be there will be a fine and just see how see how it pans out and i would still do the orc i would still refer to the orc but 
for the interim just to just to give everybody fair notice at the same time and they'll know exactly what the wording is i think that'd be that'd be a reasonable place more more educational just so people know what we're talking about and what's what's the issue i think that's that's a lot better i'm taking taking back my motion we'll just put <laughs> something in the paper no, well, well I'm, I'm not voting for that <laughs> you're not voting for what for putting something in the paper with uh, no the ordinance that would be a notice of this uh, ordinance is what it's talking about well at this point the thing is, what's it, all is it goes in the newspaper people are going to start calling up and complaining about signs anyway then uh, why don't we just nullify the whole conversation forget it we're sending this to the orc send it to them see what they come up with and just let the code enforcement officer do his job Plain and simple. If he gets like a plan, plan, then take care of it. Yeah, and we do not give him permission to um, give people, you know, the permission to not follow the order. That is not part of the original. Right. Motion. I just am clarifying that we are not doing that. We're not going to give. No, but we are not making it a motion. We're That's not fine. voting on it. We're just saying that this is the way we're going to handle it at this time. That's fine. Is that fine with everybody? Yep. Yes. We'll run it what, one more time. Ben, I'm old. Come on. Um, well, I'm catching up to you. <laughs> oh, you're just a kid. Um, we're just going to go with sending it to the ORC and just uh, see what they say. If uh, the code enforcement officer gets a complaint regarding anybody flying a flag or whatever have you, then he will do what he has to regarding the ordinance. We're not making a motion. We're not voting on it. We're just going to say, let him do his job. Which he does. Which, not to be sarcastic, but what does that mean? I mean, he, like this gentleman, he cited him for being in violation. Because someone came to his office with a complaint. He hasn't done any fines. He hasn't been taken to court or anything, correct? I don't know if he's got, I don't believe he's gone to court. He's just been, no. he's just uh, uh, been cited. And he took it down. And that's all that has been done so far. Right. That is all that's been done. And, but the point is that if somebody else calls, the code enforcement officer and complains about a flag fly in that the code enforcement will do his job and go down and he will look at it and he will follow the ordinance and if he has to cite them then he cites them okay so far i'm with you we're not picking on anybody that's all that we're saying right. yes it's a citation but at this point it doesn't have any teeth in it I don't believe it does, does it, John? Uh, if an ordinance is being violated, there is a potential for a fine. Uh, but he took the flag if, down. If if it's gone down, then it becomes kind of silly. But All if, right. If he doesn't take it down, then a fine would be would be applied. I mean, he's been told that he cannot fly that flag because it's against the ordinance. If he chooses not just he anybody let's go generic anybody chooses to raise that a flag again after they have been given us a, a warning or a citation they have chosen to violate the ordinance so they are putting themselves in that position not the town correct so i think the only responsible thing we can do as a board is to send it to the orc have them look at it come back with any suggestions that they would want and let the code enforcement officer um, uh, take care of any violations or complaints with this, the uh, ordinance that we have at this time. I think I can support that. <laughs> So that we don't need a motion, we don't need anything. We have already voted that uh, we are sending it to the ORC. 
and that's been taken care of. Yep. Okay. And that that went five to zero. Did we vote on that, Madam Kathy? Chair? Just a moment, just a minute, Ben. Kathy, did we vote on sending it to the ORC? Yes. Yes, yes. we did. Okay. Yes, Ben, you wanted something? Well, I think Kim mentioned it, but I think it would be good if the manager maybe check with our attorney, maybe check with May Municipal, yep. to see if yep. there's anything that we might be missing that okay. would help us. Yep. Yeah, Kathy, Kathy had made that uh, suggestion, and I've, I've made a note of it. Okay. Okay, okay. very good. Okay. All right, so we're done with that business, the flag issue. Now, under new business, we have the transfer station furnace replacement. Ted and John. Um, basically, the way, basically, the wastewater... Uh, sorry. The, the waste fuel um, um, furnace at uh, transfer station has failed. It's 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 old, and ha we have to maintain a certain temperature down there. Otherwise, all the material will freeze within the building, and very hard to move frozen material, as as Ted knows, out of uh, out of the truck. So it's important. It's important that this be replaced. Uh, long before it gets cold and of course it should set the thing in motion uh, it's not june it'll suddenly be cold and we need to have it in place and start the process as soon as possible ted has two bids and you can explain ted if you if you'd like anything anything more than this yeah, there's, there's uh, only one company in maine that sells these waste oil furnaces and I got a bid from one out of Massachusetts called Queenburn, and they're ten thousand fifty dollars. And the one Durango Waste Oil in Waterville is nine thousand thirty-three. And the reason we stay with this here because we don't buy oil for this furnace. We get all the oil. This this heat is free for people bring in their use more oil. We got companies that bring in fifty-five hundred gallons at a time. Down. Okay. Um, is this how are we paying for this? Is this going through capital or is this going to or does uh, Ted have it in his uh, budget? Um, I think we'd have to hit contingency. There's ninety two hundred dollars there. Um, Ed. Ted has been running pretty lean on his budget, so I, I wouldn't. I, and he's got a lot of other things that he like to he like to have, like the skid steer, which he's not going to get. So uh, it's either contingency or take it out of uh, you know the equipment reserve. What's the board's thoughts? Why aren't we putting this in the next budget? Because well because you'll have to order it right away and to get it installed within the next couple of months. Well, hey, I'll, I'll say right up front, I am not happy that we're getting quotes instead of bids. We keep asking for bids and we never get bids. There's always an excuse and I don't understand it. Yeah, but in this case, it's a, it's an odd, type of thing. There are only two companies that make them, one in Maine and one in Massachusetts. And why and, can't those two companies bid? Well, they did put in, according to Teddy, gave them prices. One was 10,000 something, and I think he said the main one was 9,200 or something. But it is the responsibility of the manager to put these out to bid. It's not Ed's responsibility. I'm just We've gone yeah. through this a dozen times, and we're going through it again. Yeah, I know. I know that, Ben. But uh, there are times, what you know, sole sole source, when there's nobody else out there, and Ted has, has reached out to the uh, the main people and got another bid in the same in the same price range from out of state. So there's there's nowhere there's nowhere else to go. You're not going to get anything different. John, the, that's not the point. No, just I, put it out to bid. I don't see why that's a hassle. If you've only got two people, it makes it even easier. 
We have a policy, and it gets ignored repeatedly. Okay, well, we can put it out to bed. It's just, you know, the board will do what it wants. I'm not going to vote for it. I'm tired of same excuses. Pardon me, I'm sorry. Okay, um, what is the board's pleasure on this one? Can move the Wait a second, ahead, Kim, Kim has her hand up. Kim? Yeah. I have a question. So we need this thing, like this is something that we have to have. We can't operate well without it. Correct. Obviously not. All right. Okay, Jeff, do you have any comment, Catherine? I was just going to make a motion that uh, between Ted and John, they can can uh, get this thing ordered. Obviously, it isn't something you just uh, call up one day and it's here, like Amazon Prime, you know, in three or four days. So I think time is of the essence, obviously. So my motion would be to let them do what they have to do. We pay for it out of, as John mentioned, either contingency or the equipment reserve, and they will, John can figure out which is the best way to go. All right, we have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay, any more discussion? Well, it can't come out of reserve because we don't have the authority to take it out of reserve. No, it would have to come out of contingency. Okay. All those in favor, Ben? No. Jeff? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Kim? Yes. And I will also vote yes. I agree, but I'm voting yes because we need it, but I also agree with Ben on this is not contingent to be done. We should ask for bids. Same but I will vote for it only because it, it is needed. And hopefully once we get back into the town office face-to-face -face meetings, that we will be able not to have these type of paperwork continued. So Madam we Chair, have four to one. Yes, Ben. I thank you for your comments. I'm just going to say that we do need it. I was on the board when we got it originally. But I've never met a department head who didn't come forward and say, oh, I've got to have it yesterday. I've got to have it yesterday. And, I, you know, I don't believe it. We certainly have plenty of time to do this and do it properly. But I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> okay, so it passed four to one. All right, monthly financials. Um, does anybody have any comments? It seemed to be doing pretty good. Yeah. Look, animal control only spent 66%. Contingency, which is going to take a hit right away, is only half spent. Um, municipal building, that's pretty much that's pretty much spent floors and other repairs. Parks and Rec, they had, they've spent 80%. Of course, they haven't been operational for a few months, at least only a skeleton staff. Public Works. Uh, they're doing well at 81 percent they've been operational through the uh, through the covid slowdown uh, transfer station that's been that's a bit, been a bit higher expenditure because we had to we weren't able to do recycling for a few months but it's pretty pretty much within the spending range um, waterfront i don't think we've had the bill i don't think we've had the bill on the electricity electric meters Oh, I think, is that right, Ted? We haven't had that bill yet. Ted? I think Ted left. Yeah, okay. And uh, that's uh, that's basically it for my comment on that. And then with the, with the patient statement, it, 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 has, it has increased, as, as you saw, uh, from April 30th at 11.2 million up to 11.6 million as of the end of May. And it, needless to say, the market is extremely volatile. So a lot can change in a week or two or a month. 
That's my that's my comment on that. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes, Ben. Now that we're going to buy this furnace, looking at the balance in the public works, why wouldn't we take it out of there as opposed to contingent? We take it out of contingent. We have nothing in contingent. Eighteen thousand public works. They're not going to spend that in the next couple of weeks. I hope not. Well, that's a that's a good that's a good question, John. Yeah, um, there's a lot there's a lot of work they're they're trying to do paving and culverts, and they don't really have the money to get it all done. It will uh, most of that most of that will get spent. Uh, not not all of it. Just that is pretty good about it. That's that's all I have. Ted, you, you the project you were telling me about. Do. I think Ted, are you with us? Yeah, I made it back. I don't know what happened. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. we're trying to figure out the hundred and eighteen thousand dollars you have right now in your account. Why don't you take the nine thousand dollars for the furnace out of your account instead of going through contingency? I could do that. You could? On the uh, take it out of the, I might have to run two budgets together to make it uh, the public works and the transfer station, but I could get the money out of them too. But you have $118,000 in your budget as of the end of May for public On the works. Trans for the public works. Right. And this is for transfer uh, station. Yeah, for the transfer station, but I still have tipping fees that's got to be paid, and I'd have to crunch some numbers to make sure with everything, the payroll and everything together, that we could make it. But I don't Madam think. Chair, I'm sorry, I I confuse public works with transfer station. I apologize. Yeah, I was going to say we can't transfer money from public works to transfer station. We can only go with their budget number. So it would have to come out of contingency at this time. Okay, then. Um, I haven't looked over the transfer alone, but I'm pretty sure we could find it in there. No, you've only got. Fifty-six thousand dollars for your for the month of June, and you've got payroll and everything else to take out of there. So I think we are going to have to take it out of contingency at this point. Out of the Which transfer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because okay. as of May, I am at ninety percent. Right. So by the time you do your payroll for June you will not have enough money to take it out of your account. So it's going to have to come out of contingency. Yep. Yeah, right. Madam so, Chair. Yes, Ben. I'll raise this point once again. To the, the, they're not going to get this until the next calendar year. We're not going to pay for it until the next calendar year. Why not? budget it in the next calendar year and we don't have to pinch pennies right now. Because you have to order it and give them money. Good idea. Because that could work too because on this budget here they, we had bad problems with the truck and we lost a lot of money rebuilding the the Mac, the, tr the truck. We sh if everything goes well we've got a plan. We should be able to take it out of the, next fo the following year. I don't see why we can't. This is a next year budget item. It's not this year. What's the board's pressure? What do we do? Do we push it on into next year's budget? Well, I think if Ted feels he can do it that way, then, then we should do it that way as opposed to, you know, right this moment. I just thought that they had to order it and usually we order something they want some money up front. But if, we, if he can wait after the 
end of this month or whatever, and we're into the new year, do it that way, if, it, if it's possible. What do you think, Ted? Do you think you could do it that way? I, I could do it that way. Because understand, Ted, that you're not going to get the money until September. Yeah, that's, 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 yeah, that's what I was thinking, but I wasn't sure. Because we have, we're going to vote on September 8th, so you're not going to have that $9,000 till September 8th. I've got June. Yeah. But I could get the ball rolling and have them start on it. Okay. By the time they got it ordered and in and everything, it would be into the new budget. I was just kind of hoping to get it out of this one to start with a clean slate at the beginning. But the more I look, we put a lot of money into the truck up there and into the vehicles up there this season before I come on. And hopefully with this new mechanic and everything, this thing that don't have to be sent out and the kind of money won't have to be spent again. Okay, so does somebody want to make a motion to not take the money out of contingency but include this excuse in the 2020-2021 budget? So moved. Second. Okay. We're going to vote on it. All those in favor, Ben. Yes. Jeff. Yes. Catherine. Yes. Kim. Yep. And I'm yes. So we will put it into next year's budget. In the transfer station budget, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. That way we can charge the other down. That's true. Never thought of that then. Okay, the next item is water pipe repair at wastewater treatment plant. What is that issue? Um, you, you skipped the, the half day closure. Oh, I'm sorry. The, year end. the half a day closure on June 30th. I'll make a motion to uh, close the town hall uh, half a day on June 30th for uh, fiscal year end procedures. Second. All those in favor, Ben? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Kim? Yep. And myself? It passes 5 0. Okay, now let's do the water pipe repair at wastewater treatment plant. Yep. Um, Ted, Ted was there while they, while they were dealing with um, Chris Cassette. I had to call in preference because there was a fair bit of digging at the end of that, that, that trench or uh, that trench thing. Madam Chair, somebody needs to view. I know. I think it's Ted. It might be Kathy and John because they're in the office when they're so close. Our doors are shut. I'll, I'll close the door. I think it's Ted. Usually it lights up. It is you know. Easy. Quiet now. It's, I think it's Ted. I think it's Ted because once he mutes, it, it seems to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ted, you can still hear us, can't you? Go like this if you can hear us. Okay. All right, John. Come back? Did yes, come back? it's off now. Yeah. It stopped. And anyway, um, they had to call in Crooker to, uh, to repair it. It took four or five hours it was uh the pipe the pipe was quite a mess it was just just over the uh, just over the railway line definitely definitely on our property uh haven't got the bill but it was an emergency and uh ted ted, ted and the water system did as much as they could but had to call a crooker in so beyond that ted ted might have more information i don't know if the, i think they patched it you know, they put a patch pavement in on top of it. Uh, Ted, do you have anything? Ted, do you have anything to add? Actually, actually Crooker, it's a, water, a four inch water line that laid right alongside the sewer, and it was like six feet deep. And we have the we have no equipment or trench boxes to get down in there. And uh, we're dealing with the water close to the sewer line. 
the water district was had to be involved, but it was an all day project to get it repaired. And uh, so there'll be a, probably a bill coming from the water district too, as well as Brooka. All right. Do we have any idea ballpark figure what this might cost? I wouldn't dare guess on it. I'm not. I'm not sure. I would say, I, I wouldn't dare guess. Okay. All right. So, John, what do you want for a motion? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. What do you want for a motion from us? Uh, it's it's more a matter of um, just informing the board, and once we have the number, we'll uh, we we'll uh, ask the board for a motion to pay okay. it. Unless unless you want to do it open ended, which I prefer not. to. I don't want to do open hand. No, I'd rather see the bill. Yeah. Okay. So now we're into the town manager's report. And before I turn it over to John, I just want to explain at the end of this meeting, we had scheduled an executive session. There will be no executive session tonight. Um, we have moved that on to tomorrow night after our workshop, just so everyone knows that there will not be an executive session. Uh, John, you can go ahead with your town manager's report. Um, okay, item A is the Morse High School graduation. We discussed that. It went very well. Everybody was very happy with everything the airport did and Ted's crew and so on and so forth. So that was that was very well done. On the town meeting, as you well know, uh, before we get to the town meeting, we have budget workshops, one scheduled for tomorrow, another one scheduled for the 22nd, which I believe is Next, 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 what? Tuesday. Uh, Monday. Tuesday. No, oh, well, I wrote down 22. Maybe I'm wrong. And the last one. No, on it's the on the 23rd. 23rd, okay. 23rd. All right. And then on the 25th, if that's necessary. Um, the, the budget workshops are going to be held in the municipal hearing room. And obviously, this will be the first time we've come back to live meetings, which we have to do. It's very awkward trying to trying to work all this with so much going on uh, by by way of teleconferencing and telephone calls and so on and so forth. So uh, obviously, we have to do the social distancing and within reason wear masks. I. The spacing, we're not quite not quite sure how many people we can fit in to the room. Probably around 15. I've got to configure, I've got to configure uh, tables and chairs and such like. I'm planning on opening the windows a little bit to get some fresh air coming in. And there's an extractor fan in the ceiling that we have not been using. So I'll turn that on um, to get some air circulating. Because one of one of the things about the whole, you know, keeping the, social, keeping the social distance and such like, is that uh, the distance is one part, but also the duration of the exposure. In other words, we've got long meetings with number of people um, that puts everybody at a higher risk than just short meeting with a handful of people. So, um, if we're going to if we're going to do this, the board will have to limit limit the Limit the length of the discussions. I I would recommend that there be no be no public comment, uh, and that's that's allowed under the emergency powers. And uh, then we just we just see how it goes, see how comfortable people are, and uh, if we do find that there's a reason, say a public hearing, um, and then more than a few people need to come in, uh, we can have someone leave. For example, I could leave. Um, for five minutes, if if our room count was too high, so we just we just play it by ear. But I think it's very important to keep the distance. Um, but I was I was saying to the chair earlier today, w with a public with public meetings, public hearings, we can't we can't insist that people uh, that people wear masks. But we've no enforcement authority because it's a public meeting. All we can do is encourage them. To uh, to be cooperative with that because you know I'd hate I'd hate for us 
to trigger, to trigger some outbreak or alternatively contribute to maybe a second wave, which I'm real twitchy about because people are getting pretty careless and many, many people in supermarkets aren't wearing masks. So anyway, that's that's my suggestion going forward. And of course, tomorrow is the is going to be our first effort and we'll see, we'll see how it goes. John, I just want to make sure that we clarify this, that the budget workshops on the 18th, the 23rd and the 25th are only the selectmen and the two members of the press. Yeah, and presence. Yeah. Right. And nobody, it, it's only if the if the board wishes to talk to someone, that's okay, but there'll be no questioning from the public or even the press for that matter, unless it's afterwards, because it's genuinely a workshop reaching the decision point, which is the board's prerogative, and you know, getting getting this budget, getting this budget moved ahead. And also uh, we discussed that like July 7th which is the day we are to sign the warrant, will be our first yes. public meeting at the town hall, and it will be limited to 15 people. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think okay. 15 is the number. Because, and Of course, when you do the math, you've got five selectmen, you've got myself, Kathy, two press. I mean, that doesn't leave, that doesn't leave an awful lot of uh, space for other people. And I'm very very conscious of the need for the social distance thing because you know how people shift around in their chairs and so on and so forth so if we freeze them in place that's one thing but if they're if they act like human beings they'll want to move around so we have to allow room for them to move around keep them walk spaces so they can get in and out well, yes. we can start. We can start with fifteen. We can start with fifteen. If we have to, we could cut it back, or we could make more, depending on right. how we lay out the room at this point. Yep. But July seventh will be our first public meeting down to town hall. Now, the next question: We've always had our meeting start at four thirty. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do beginning July seventh? Do you want to go back to the six o'clock? I can. I, I, I could I could make it there at um, five, Judy. If we, I would prefer five o'clock than six o'clock. I think that that's my preference. What about the rest of the board? Five o'clock sounds good. Okay, so we will start having our meetings at five o'clock. Our our regular selectman meetings, beginning July seventh, will be at five o'clock at the town hall meeting room. Kathy, did you want to? I saw your hand. Well, I was, <laughs> I was just thinking of the um, the current layout of our customers coming in um, the route one side and they are currently exiting uh, through the meeting room doors. So we'll just have to, um, it office closes at five, but you may have a few stragglers that will be walking, but we'll figure something out for that, for those nights. But I, it just dawned on me when you said that. <laughs> at well, five. Yeah, same door. Well, we might we might close the window access at four thirty, and they could go out the way they came in. Maybe. Okay, we yeah. could do that. Yeah. Okay, that sounds like a winner. Okay, we'll work that part out. We've got a few weeks to deal with that one. Okay, John, I'm sorry. And uh, oh no, that's that's okay. I interrupted you. Mm, not me. You're next on the appearance of the town committee. Yeah. Um, yes, I I know that we we were hoping to have a short meeting. I don't know if you want to consider the sunken garden issue. You you know, last March the board voted to remove that shed, and last week I got a I got a and I and I didn't because I knew this was one of these you will legacy things, and I was hoping it would resolve itself, but it didn't, and so. I had Beth, Beth Maxwell, very nice woman, came in a couple of weeks ago. She and Terry Heller had been talking to, to Ben Logan, sorry, Bill Logan, the attorney, said, oh, I don't see it as a, uh, I don't see it as a, a structure, no, no big deal. So I dug out, I dug out the deed and kind of interesting. It says, subject to the conditions that said property shall be used as a public garden or parking or park. 
that no building shall be erected on said premises. And here's the bit that I hadn't addressed before. And the said appearances be as they are now. In other words, it's supposed to look the same way as it did when it was granted to the town. And as I could have uh, Ms. Maxwell and Heller get a written opinion from that attorney and then I could refer it to another attorney because a lot of a lot of hurt feelings, hurt feelings, I should say, and uh, I don't want to. Ma I don't want to make it. You know, it's a nice legacy for the town, but I also don't want to leave a legacy of animosity over something that was designed to be you know, an asset for the town as opposed to a source of argument. So, my anyway, that's that's those are the facts as I see them, and the alternative would be to get. A legal opinion from the one side and then run it by our people and you know me i prefer not to run it by the legal people but there are times i have to and then be done with it but it, there are hard feelings and i i hate to see it but we also talking about a shed and a pagoda right that they want to well, put the, in the sunken garden yeah well you haven't seen the design yet from of the pergola i've I, I never, I could never describe what it looks like, but I checked it on, I checked it on the internet. Now I know what a pergola looks like, and you know that's that'd be a structure. Um, It'd be a structure, and it's against the the deed. Is that correct? Basically, that's, that's the way. That's the way I read it. It's uh, no. Uh, where where am I looking here? Got it. Uh, Public Garden Park. No building. If if somebody built something, I would call that a building. But, right. I'm not an attorney. So what is the board's pleasure? Do you want John to get an, a legal opinion on our end regarding the deed or go directly by what the deed says? Madam Chair. Yes, Ben. I thought from the minutes of the last meeting, we were going to seek advice from our attorney to make sure that it was okay to do the pagola. And I would think that we would do that and that we would seek an opinion on having a building there to keep things in. If another lawyer thinks it's okay, maybe our lawyer might see it that way too. I think yeah. it should be run by our attorney. I want to do both of those things, but I I want to know what the law is on it. If I remember if I remember the last meeting, we requested uh, the people who wanted to uh, put up the pergola to turn around and give some type of a, um, they're going to do research and bring it back to the board. I would, we've not given yes or no on that one, but right. I do agree with you. I think that we do need to take this to our attorney and have them look at it, both the shed and the pergola and the deed and see where we stand. Okay, okay. I'll do anything. That. Okay, I'll start that tomorrow. Catherine, what Dave do you think? Municipal help us out with that. Oh, so you the, don't the, have to pay them. Yeah, this gets. This okay. is a little. This is a little specific to yeah. a very, very small, awkward, you know, un, unusual kind of a request. So we'd have to go to. We'd have to retain an attorney. Okay, I was just trying to save us some money. No, no, I fully understand. Fully understand. Okay, okay, so I'll do that in, do that in the morning. Last item for me is uh, economic development administrative administration grant. I've been talking to Mary Ellen, Mary Ellen Barnes, and also Steve Dyer, who's uh, who's working working on the Mason Station project, the Brownfields project, seeing if we can come up with something that would uh, stimulate some some planning money because we got to do something with the Mason Station property and down there i mean it's just sitting there no help to us so that's just an update to, for you um last thing oops another last thing i got i got two contracts one with um, lincoln county uh, regarding animal control same terms and conditions as previous years and if the board is would, would uh, the document is exactly the same except the dates are changed and if the board would give me authority to uh, to sign that, I, I I can do that. Um, so if there's a motion to allow allow me authorize me to sign the contract with uh, Lincoln County for animal control services, 
Appreciate that. All right, I need a motion. So a motion now. What did I hear you, Ben? I said so move. All right. Second. Catherine, okay. All those I'll in second. favor. Ben? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Kim? Yes. And myself, yes. It passes five to zero. Anything else, John? Yeah, uh, today I just got a, I got a document from the Mid Coast Humane Society. We've got, we've got a contract with them regarding animals, I'm going to, housing animals, I'm gonna say storing animals. <laughs> they, they bill us on a per capita basis. Currently we're at $1.30 per capita, which converts to about $4,800. They're going to increase it to uh, $1.45, $1.45, which is about an 11% increase. And that would be uh, $5,300, which is an increase of about $500. And with, with your permission, I, I will be, I'd be willing to sign, uh, sign the contract as an authorized representative. Um, okay. I have a motion on that. These things keep coming in. That's why I don't like trying to do all this stuff at distance. Anyway. Okay, do I have a motion for the 5300 for the Humane Society? So moved. Second. Catherine, Ben. Okay. All those in favor, Ben? Yes. Catherine. I mean, yeah, yes. Catherine. Jeff? Yes. Kim? <laughs> yes. And myself, yes. 5 0. That passes 5 0. Okay. Uh, and just, just to add, had a request today that from the Water Street Kitchen and Bar, uh, that the public hearing could be held on their liquor license renewal on July 7. And if that's something the board would be comfortable doing, um, I'd like to put it on the agenda. And we'd have we'd have to post it, obviously. I don't see any problem with that. Let's let's no. put it on there and get them going. Okay, John. What, John, was there an additional one? That that was a um, I and I could have misconstrued an email from 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 Kathy, but was there two? Was it was it two? Yes, <laughs> there's two. Okay, Kathy, go ahead. There is one from C Basket as well. Both of those are renewals. Okay, I would like to do to do that one as well if we if if we can. I agree. Okay, so we'll make arrangements to do them. Uh, on the 7th at five o'clock. Well, right after we do our, our business. And um, Kathy, I'm sorry, Judy, I don't mean to interrupt you. I'm, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Um, does this, does this um, interrupt their license by holding it on the 7th and not doing it sooner? No, no. All, no it doesn't. There's all sorts of, all sorts of uh, allowances made. Wonderful, no, that's all. Thank you, John and Kathy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else, John? No, you'll be glad to know that I have nothing else. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anybody, any other board members have anything they would like to share with the board? Hey, I, I just, I just, I just have have something. I guess being on the downtown um, committee years ago and looking down um, Water Street in in front of Sarah's, and I don't know if there's anything that we can do as as a board, but I just, I. I I feel that Sarah has taken a huge um, hit, and it's and it's been about a year. Um, the main uh, Department of Transportation put Jersey barriers up around the Haggett building, uh, CEI building, so cars couldn't park there. Um, they've taken the barriers down. They've been working down there, and 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 I get it that they're way 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 behind schedule, but. And maybe I need to reach out to John or the rest of the board. Has there ever been anything that a town has done for a a, a business that has gotten um, really crushed by, um, you know, something like this? Uh, not, not to my not to my knowledge, but I did I did ask Ernie, your friend Ernie, uh, <laughs> whether uh, there was anything they could do to. to uh, compensate Sarah's for all the delay, all the disruption, and so on and so forth. And basically, I'm not sure what the term is, force majeure, majeure, whatever. Um, it's kind of, no, this is just going to happen. I said, how about the contractor? 
No, not them either. Uh, however, I, I, I do agree, and I've been very concerned about poor Sarah's for, for months. Yes. And, uh, but I mean, you could do a, you know, a, 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 you know, dedicate Water Street weekend for Sarah or something like that. Okay. No, I just was looking if there was any sort of a financial um, thing that, that 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 we could do, um, I, like an abatement, like a I partial abatement or something. I mean, it's just it, I, I like I said it. it uh, um, I've gone down there and stood and looked down there, and it would be cumbersome for somebody to walk to her door at times to go in. Um, it's well, actually, that, that abatement angle might work because the value of the business has been jeopardized because it's effectively unusable. Um, the way that would work. It's just a thought, Judy, I, Colby. I, I just, I, I just, I, I, I don't know. It, it just, it's, it's uh, kind of heart-wrenching because when I was at the, um, I'll just go back a little bit. When I was working at the um, community center, if, if I ever needed anything from, you know, she's one person that I always could reach out to. Aim Supply is another. Um, and it would be a $250 something. Do you know what? I just, I just really feel like I wish, I, I wish there was something, um, you, you know, that we could do. Okay. I'll work, on, I'll work on that, see what I can come up with and get back okay. to the board. Okay. Thank you, John. That sounds good, John. Thank you. Anybody have any? Anybody else have anything? Okay, then I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor, Ben? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Kim? Yes. Myself is yes. Five zero. We are adjourned. At Thanks for that. Thank right. you. Five, you guys three, have five. a great night. See you all. Tomorrow. Yep, yep. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, though. Thank you.